Putti. Putti. Idu. Putti. Ten. Ten. Putten. Putten. Mama, is Putti still alive? No, she's not actually. That's why you didn't get a chance to meet her. Did she die in the war? Welcome to our channel, ma'am. Thank you so much for having us. Welcome. Thank you so much. I've seen your work and I was just really impressed. I'm like, when will I get onto your channel? <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so, first of all, before starting this interview, I would like to say that I'm really glad to have you guys here. And I'm super excited to know more about Ray of Hope documentary. So, what really inspired you to do, uh, to make the documentary Ray of Hope? Well, for me, it's a very personal journey. Um, as a young child who was born in the war, I in the island that's technically still called Sri Lanka, I'm an ethnic Tamil born there, and my first five years was living through a war. And for me, leaving and coming to Canada was literally the whole world of opportunities opening up for me. But I know that it still didn't open up any opportunities for so many others who continued to live on the island as Tamils who were raped or killed or lost everything in their life. And so for me, it's a very personal journey of going back to my motherland, which is Tamilulam, which is south of India, north of Sri Lanka, um, the north and east part of that island that's it's a non-self-governing state. And for me, it was important to go see with see and experience really what were the remnants of the war see my mom's home my grandmother's home and um, share that with the world because everything that I had seen prior to that was really whatever we could get through news media or the radio or something like that and it wasn't really a lot and so for me I just wanted to share a little bit of my experience with the world and it was never planned to be a documentary it was only going to be vlogs or something on my youtube channel back in the day when i was a member of parliament but then i asked my friend ryan to travel with me or actually no i didn't i asked him hey ryan what camera should i buy to take with me and he said why don't you take me with you <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I can make that happen. Mm -hmm. And that's how it ended up. The 77 riots and the 83 pogroms was obviously the ground being pulled out from underneath everybody's lives. And so that's when my dad left to find us a better place to live somewhere safe for us. He came with his expertise in filmmaking and his a lot fancier than what I would have bought digital camera <laughs> and um, captured a lot of footage and we were able to share that experience of going and seeing on the ground what Tamils really do experience and we realized that we have to make it a bigger project and tell the world in a bigger way. So when this documentary is going to launch? Uh, well, we have right now a, a festival strategy. So we're having a private screening, a gala screening for the participants uh, and ca uh, cast and crew. And um, that's going to be on May 5th. And then following that, we have a world premiere in England. So that's at the Rumford Film Festival on May 27th at 11 a.m. and then we're coming back to a few festivals here in Canada. We're going to be at a uh, the International Black and Diversity Film Festival mm -hmm. uh, where we've got 14 award nominations already come in and we're also going to be playing at a Hamilton Black Film Festival mm -hmm. and Nollywood Film Festival. Later on, we, we're <laughs> going to be at a Toronto International Nollywood Film Festival. So there are some festivals that are happening already, and we're really excited. I think we are also going to be at a Brampton International Nollywood Film Festival. Okay. Uh, I think so. So, <laughs> so you know, it's, it's exciting that we're able to share it in and amongst 
these festivals and, and to bring audiences in to experience, learn, and, and you know, just understand a little bit about this community, which is a big thing because we're all strangers to each other until we get to know each other's story and then we become family. And I think, well, friends maybe never. <laughs> <laughs> you can fight amongst family, no, but friends... Family, yeah. family you can fight with, <laughs> and you're still together. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The Sixth Amendment to the Constitution of Sri Lanka denies the very basic freedom of expression of the Tamils to advocate for their self-determination. I want to go see the effects of the war with my own eyes. He just wanted to make sure that I had something with me when um, I traveled on this trip because everybody in my family is a little nervous, but including my, my nephew. So yeah, here goes. And then, of course, I got on the phone with the Canadian Embassy in Sri Lanka. In terms of theatre, you know, May, May 11th to 18th, we hope to get it out in a, in a limited release in Ontario. At some theatres, we're still uh, securing those dates and uh, the locations, so I can't uh, uh, tell you exactly where they're at because we haven't got that in, in writing as yet, but mm -hmm. we're excited about that. You know, as Ryan said, something that's exciting is that we're being we're being invited to the two different Nollywood film festivals apparently, and that's Nigerian Film Festival. And so the fact that, and then the International Black and Diversity Film Festival, and the Hamilton Black Film Festival. Yeah. Uh, so like these are different communities that are recognizing that this is a story that they want to hear they want to see and they want their audiences to see and this is exactly what we want we want Tamils locally Tamils globally we also want everybody else locally and globally to hear this story to watch to come watch and experience the film because it's about sharing our stories with the world and I am I have nothing but gratitude for the other communities that have recognized that this is an important story that needs to be told and are willing to and invited us to screen at their festivals. It's important for us to, to share this story and to share any stories coming out mm -hmm. about our different diverse communities. Because if we don't tell the story, someone else will tell it and someone else will tell it the way that they want to tell it. So it's important for us to own our stories. And what, I, what I'm what i so proud of, you know, the team we gathered included Diana Stanislaus, who was our cultural consultant, co-director, uh, Nikila Cole, co-producer, uh, Patricia Scarlett, our, our DOP, Roger Singh, uh, our, our editors, uh, you know, Kirk Taylor, uh, consultant from India, uh, Vijay Sankar. There's so many, so many people that came together. And the one question that I asked is, what's your relationship to trauma or to an experience like this? And everyone from the very diverse communities are either a person of color mm -hmm. or a person that comes from a community that they have witnessed trauma in some way. And it's not necessarily just black and diverse people. It's people of all creeds. Like I shared this story with one Ukrainian uh, producer and she looked at it and she says, this is my story right now. 
So it's for us to to make sure that we're sharing it amongst our communities mm -hmm. and and making sure that we bring people that are not from our communities in to see it as well because only then will they better understand who we are as a people. When I graduated and started working, people asked me, where are you from? And I'm saying Sri Lankan Tamil. And then right away they go, are you Sri Lankan tiger? How do you guys are terrorists? My father was a police inspector. Uh, one of the most uh, important event that he has written down was uh, um, the night before the 1983 riots. I was afraid to talk about it up until this morning. So I came to know that uh, this is the genocide month. So please tell me more about this. Um, well, we're celebrating or commemorating many different things. And this is uh, genocide month, uh, genocides that have happened across the world. And so I, I saw in, in, the, uh, in the parliament, the Canadian parliament, uh, a note that was read about what happened in Rwanda. And, you know, that happened about 30 years ago now. And I think it was over a million people were killed because of ethnic cleansing. What we are learning here is that there's atrocities everywhere. And it's not to be condoned, it's not to be accepted. And innocent people are caught in the crosshairs of mm -hmm. these things. And it's those innocent lives whose stories that we have to celebrate through memorializing the experiences so that it doesn't happen again. Even as we speak, we still see that people across the Middle East, and regardless of where the politics lies, innocent people are are caught in these crosshairs. So let's not have another genocide. Let's find a way towards peace. And uh, let's live like a community of human beings. Peacefully. Peacefully, and, and I mean, with the Armenian genocide, for example, it took the Armenian genocide 105 years to get recognition. So we're, we have a long way to go. If that's the, how long it takes for the global community to say, yes, this actually happened, right? It took the Armenians 105 years. How many generations is that before the genocide of Armenians was recognized globally? Um, Ryan had mentioned Rwanda. How about what's happening in Sudan or Gaza, the Palestinians right now? We cannot stand by, especially as survivors and global allies, we cannot stand by as hate-driven... Is it hate-driven? I don't know, but slaughtering of innocent people happens. Um, it's also part of why we decided that we want to launch the movie in May, because May is also May 11 to 18 on, in Ontario is the week where we commemorate the Tamil genocide. It's a Tamil genocide education week throughout all of Ontario. And so we wanted to make sure that the movie was released in time for all of the school boards across Ontario to make sure that they have a film. They could, they could, all of the school boards and schools and teachers can plan a field trip to a movie theater to go watch the film and then talk about it in their classes. Tamil genocide is real and we have a product that they could use to help facilitate those conversations with their students as well. Um, it creates opportunities, so many opportunities for conversations, whether it's in our homes or even in our classrooms. I would say that I'm Tamil little man if I'm Tamil and that's not anything else but what it is. 
Thank you for giving us the time. It was really good conversation. <laughs> Thank you so much.